I'm sure everybody who's an Atari 2600 owner has been saying, how can I play games on a video cassette with my Atari 2600? Well, we're here to tell you how to do that today. And hi, everybody. I'm Kelly at K-E-L-L-Y-T-H-U-L on Twitter, Instagram, and threads. And joining me as always... I am Dr. Mike at Official Pagan on everything. I don't really use Twitter or whatever the hell it's called today, uh, but you can find me on everything else, even threads, as soon as I figure out how to use it. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, leave a couple of comments, not just one, a couple of comments. We really, really want to hear from you. And while you're doing it, why don't you throw on that hard no playlist? It's the world's shortest podcast. You can burn through a bunch of episodes quickly and you can do it all while wearing one of our t-shirts hit up that merch store. Yeah. And we, and we genuinely uh, appreciate comments. I mean, every once in a while, there's ones that hurt our feelings a little bit, <laughs> but sometimes there's some truth in it, but it's just been so cool sometimes to get uh, just, it's just happened over this uh, past week. Uh, we did a show quite a while back on this kind of really cool monitor setup deal that could kind of transfigure in a bunch of different ways, depending on how you wanted to, to do a monitor and do things. It's a pretty expensive piece of equipment. Uh, somebody had watched the video and let us know that they had just put an order in for, order in for one and would let us know how it, how it worked out once they got it. And that was really cool to hear. And plus very the cool. general, what's that? I said, that is very cool. Yeah, it was cool. And then the, uh, the gentleman, uh, that did the, um, Zombies Ate My Neighbors Doom mod uh, came across our video where we were discussing and praising that fine, fine work. Uh, and um, and uh, we had bounced around some suggestions that at least intrigued him. I don't know if it'll <laughs> necessarily go go forward, uh, but the making the pitch for Paperboy as a Doom mod, he thought had promise. So. So it's cool. It's yeah, just really great to hear from folks. So give us a chance uh, to, if you get a chance to do that, we'd appreciate it. Yeah. We would um, definitely like to see that. And and if you're watching again, hear me out on this, beat him and eat him. Do mud. There. So I've been on, on recent edits, you know, I had uh, the muscle memory was still there. But I hadn't rolled out the Michael I counter recently on a lot of our videos, which I've usually had pretty good, pretty good uh, need for in the past. But on recent edits, it was, I was back. I was back again uh, to having to put the Michael I counter up again because he lies. And so I need to keep track of it for you folks. And um, uh, so doing that. I'm struggling uh, because I don't want to encourage bad behavior. <laughs> and so, Hell, so are we going to get a beat counter? There's not going to be a beat counter. No. <laughs> Cause and I have I, suggestions I, on the graphics. Yeah. yeah I bet you would. <laughs> and we're not going to have, it's been this many days since the, the show has had a, <laughs> had a beat reference, but um, we'll just have to pass on that. A beat meter. A what meter? A beat meter. That's what it should be. Anyway, moving right along. Um, so I had never heard this. Uh, there's a YouTube channel out there, uh, Poger, P-O-J-R. Uh, he's got some pretty good content out there. I've really, I've really enjoyed, once I came across this video, which the, the great algorithm said, Atari guy, Atari 2600 guy, you'll probably like this. And I did. Not just an Atari guy or Atari 2600 <laughs> guy, an Atari token Baron. user. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It, uh, it's working out well. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly was an early adopter. Yes. Yes, indeed I was. Um, and uh, and I'm going to possibly revise my uh, retirement planning <laughs> approach to say to put all of your uh, income into Atari tokens perhaps uh, is not... Um, not the best strategy, shall we say? <laughs> so, just say it. So, um, but uh, Spoger, he's he's got some pretty pretty interesting content out there. Uh, he delivers the information well, uh, and he talked about something called the Star Path for the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Now, I'm a big Atari Twenty Six Hundred guy. Uh, that was the main family console growing up. 
um, and also the counsel I took to college with me <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. Um, had you heard of this, Mike? No, not at all. Um, I'm fairly familiar with 2600. While we were, you know, I grew up with Nintendo, so 2600 was right before that, but 2600 was still around when I was growing up with Nintendo. So you would still see them in people's houses and things like that. So I played a fair amount of 2600. And then, of course, emulators and things like that. And Kelly and I are both big Atari fans. We both had the fight stick, things like that. So I'm very familiar with the 2600 catalog. Was not familiar with cassette games for it or this this peripheral. But it is right up my alley. Um, so I'm a huge Commodore 64 guy. Um, Kelly and I are both Commodore guys. Him more so Amiga and me more so 64. But Commodore guys here. Uh, Commodore 64, a lot of games were cassette based games there or there were a lot of cassette based games, I should say. Um, And I'm a huge fan of add ons for systems because I am among the few who will till the death fight for the 32 (laughs) X. Yeah, the the few, the not so proud. (laughs) (laughs) the 32 Xers, but, uh, it, she does, you know, you, you actually support it more than you bring up beat them and eat them, which is, you know, just isn't saying something. Um, yeah, just got a point on the beat meter. Hey, <laughs> <I hate> to... sure. <laughs> okay. Um, the, uh, but the, I had never heard of it. Um, and I figured it'd be right up your alley because of the, you like the, the add on type of stuff. You're also a big cassette guy. So I was like, okay, yes. this is, this is it and a lot of the very kind of interesting stuff that and software on cassettes um another area of interest so this was good uh you know you you get to see a demonstration of hey here's the you know the atari 2600 frogger which is very playable um true in terms of spirit um not in terms of appearance necessarily but uh, for the uh, Frogger arcade game, gameplay on Atari 2600 Frogger is pretty reasonable, given especially the very limited capabilities of this. The system just didn't have much much to work with. Um, 128 um, bytes of memory, and that's not kilobytes, that's, that's bytes, and then four kilobytes on a, of ROM on a, a cartridge was the max. Uh, this, when you added this thing, it took that, that memory situation increased about 49 times <laughs> in terms of, so you had a little more room to do stuff. And when you have no room to do stuff, one of the first things that suffers is graphics. And that's, you look at Frogger, the 2600 version while the gameplay is closed, you know, the, the frogs are brown dots, <laughs> uh, and, uh, there's no real texturing at all where the, um, star path version of Frogger looks darn close to the arcade game. I mean, it was really, really impressive. Um, in the video, we'll include a link to it, uh, Poger showed a variety of games. What I was disappointed is when I saw this kind of miraculous improvement with Frogger, I was like, okay, good. Now I'm going to see a couple more games where they've really dialed it up. Uh, but it seemed like a lot of the other examples he gave, there's one kind of Maze Hunter type of one that was a, actually – magnitudes better than the atari version of the 2600 version but a lot of the other ones were almost a wash which was kind of disappointing but i thought it was fascinating uh because this was basically for those of you not familiar with the star path like mike and i were until we saw this video (laughs) um it uh it's something that you uh you connect to your 2600 uh and it utilizes instead of using a cartridge um you're using a cassette. So the, the device is going in the cartridge slot and the cassette goes into the device uh, and that does it. And because cassettes are so much cheaper than cartridges to manufacture, these games were rolling out at 15 bucks a piece when the average Atari game was twice that, if not more, um, the 2600. So it's cheaper software there. And, and even more for at- the adult titles. Yeah, well, you always play it at premium, and it did not appear that there were any adult titles available on the on the Star Path. I was really hoping that we were going to see the cassette version of Beat 'Em and Eat 'Em, some vein detail and things like that. Yeah. Well, be prepared for disappointment because <laughs> I don't <laughs> think that 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 happens. 
um it was you know it was interesting so then i i thought you know so i i will i start to do more and more searches uh to see if i can score myself a virtual boy at some point in time uh mostly as prototype work for the bog boy that that uh mike and i are going to put together and make millions on but uh those are pretty hard to find and when you do find them they're really expensive uh people selling them uh I had a hard time finding this Starpath device at all. And when I did, it was clocking in around 80 bucks, hundred bucks. Um, I'm interested in it. 2600 stuff. Yeah. I'm interested in it. I'm not that interested in it. I think it would be super cool to get um, Frogger on the uh, cassette. I did see a number of the games. So the cassettes with the games, those those seem to be a lot more available um, on eBay and some other things there than the actual device. Um, so I don't know. How were the prices on the games coming in? Uh, not cheap. I mean, you're talking probably, I mean, it, it depended on the condition of the game, but I was seeing it between you know, like 30 to 50 uh, for most of them. And then if you had one that was like in its original packaging, they're, you know, they're jacking the price way up on that. But um, so so if you happen to have an extra star path laying around the house and you guys want to get rid of it, get a hold of us. We'll be glad to take it off your hands. Uh, we'll give you a, a warm shout out on the show. <laughs> say thank you. But I would love, I would love to to get that experience, but it's just something I had never heard of. And I was pretty familiar with the guy with the Atari 2600 uh, goodies, all the different things you could kind of get. Uh, but that was one never heard of. Looks cool. In fact, it plays, uses a cassette for the game media. I think that's really cool and intriguing uh, to, to see. It's just all the good things about it. Like, oh, it's a lot lower price. Those those days are gone because now they're collector items. And so it's a different market, but uh, it looks pretty cool. But yeah, the only part I was a little disappointed on is that there weren't weren't a ton of game, a ton of examples of it. And here's, because it clearly showed what you could do and really advance it. They're just... My guess is they just didn't have a lot of people developing for that platform because the target audience was small and uh, they were off doing other things. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely intrigued by cassette-based games. One of the things that I like about the Commodore 64 is essentially you can put games on anything, it seems. Uh, everything from, you know, floppy disks to cassettes to vinyl records to uh, tones in a streaming movie on Netflix. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure you could just scream at it long enough and it'll build a code for a program for you. It seems like it can do anything. So a lot of, you know, there's a lot of interesting stuff for these older systems and workarounds that people came up with to make them able to do things that they're just not natively able to do and not in the same way that uh and i'm not coming down on it super nintendo was a great great system but nintendo oftentimes would use helper chips and cartridges to get games to do things that the system just couldn't do on its own uh that was pretty common um they even did it on nes to a smaller degree but frequently enough on super nintendo uh genesis for their actual sega published games only ever did that once and it was for virtual racing it was near the end of the original run of the genesis and the cartridge it made the cartridge significantly more expensive even at the time than other games so it, it probably wouldn't have really taken off for them anyway to be able to do it but it was interesting because it could make a Genesis cartridge render polygons. So you had a polygon based game on a 16 bit system. So again, it is interesting. The stuff they can make systems do when they come up with stuff like this, uh, this though, seems not so much like helper chips. This actually seems much more in line with something like a 32 X. Whereas the 32 X connected directly to your Genesis to boost the power up to a 32 bit system. So it was kind of a cheaper way to get into that market when the initial 32-bit systems were coming out at, at pretty steep price points, like the 3DO was $700 back then, which would be like $1,200 now, things like that. So 32X gave you a cheaper option to get into that 32-bit market by boosting the power of the system that you already had so you could get larger game cartridges and things like that. So this is very much that same situation. So it interests me in that way as well. So this is definitely something... I don't know if, you know, I'd be making that eBay purchase for a hundred dollars or whatever it is, but it's definitely something I want to see more of and learn more about. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to keep an eye out too. Cause, uh, hopefully, hopefully I'll stumble across one that's at a slightly friendlier price point. Um, I don't think it's going to be available on Timu anytime soon, but I'll, I'll keep looking. There's all kinds of magic things out there. So we'll see. Cool. Well, that's all we have for this, this show, but just wanted to kind of check in. If you had, if you had one of these, let us know what your experience was and what games you had, because it'd be, be interested to see how that all, all kind of worked out. But, uh, and uh, keep an eye out for me. And if you see a good deal, let me know. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Mog Panda. <laughs>